Hey guys, welcome back to Three Rivers Survival. All right guys, if you've been following uh, my channel, thank you very much. Thank you for liking and subscribing. Hit those thumbs up, hit the little bell icon. I have a ton of videos that I'm moving over from Three River Blades. If you're not familiar, Three River Blades is the channel where I make all my knives. I'm just taking all the stuff like preparedness, gear reviews, and all that stuff and moving it over here. So this way it's more of a genre specific channel and you're welcome. So what I have here laid out is a 2018 where I was at the time and I'm going to drop the camera. You guys can see what I have here and then I will show you the progression. So every day or every other day, I'm gonna drop a video all the way to catch up to 2022. I hope you guys enjoy the show. So let me drop the camera and we'll get into it. All right guys, so certain things like my wallet hasn't probably changed in about 10 to 12 years. This is the VanQuest wallet with RFID. As you can see, it's kind of beat up. I'm still rocking it. They still sell these. I'm gonna put all the links down below if you want one. It's just a very simple fold. It has uh, four pockets and just one on top. That's it, it's very simple, very slim line. I know they have new metallic ones and all kinds of Kydex and all that kind of great stuff, but you know, to me, I'm kind of an old salt, so I'm just gonna leave that. As far as medical kit goes, in 2018, I was carrying some type of medical kit. Uh, I have carried this for quite some time now, so you're gonna see this in a couple of videos. The SWAT T tourniquet uh, was something that was developed. It's okay, I don't love it. It works good on children. It's kind of hard to self-implement. So if you had a cat or a uh, soft T wide, it's probably gonna be a little bit better. So I have the SWAT T. And this is just vacuum sealed Z-Fold gauze. And on this side is a H and H medical compression bandage. And right here is a little bit of uh, black gloves. That's all it is. I would prefer if you can get some blue gloves, black gloves tend to be a little bit hard to see, especially when you're dealing with liquids. All right, so we'll talk a little bit about the G-Shock. This is the G-Shock that I was rocking back in the day. I still rock it. I don't even think I changed the batteries on it. That's how good these G-Shocks are. This is the analog slash digital watch GA100C8ACR. It's $84 on Amazon right now. I think it has a 50 meter uh, uh, waterproof. Um, G-Shocks are just bomb proof. Laps, uh, you could do laps, you could do times, you can do all kinds of stuff. Uh, it, it does have a uh, illumination function, all that good stuff. 55, 55 meter stainless case, water resistant up to 200 meters or 660 feet. So I apologize, now I'm reading it. Um, but what I like about this watch, it was just bomb proof. As you can see, it's got quite some wear on it. It does have, what was happening was, as I was doing a lot of my knife grinding, the face bezel was getting all the sparks and stuff and they were getting kind of beat up. So I had to remember to take my watch off, but you can't go wrong. This thing still rocks and I haven't changed the battery in years. So that's my G-Shock, big, big fan of them. And I'll probably, now that I see it, I'll probably just keep rocking it because it works. All right, so for me, this was my moleskin uh, notebook. And it's, a, I think it's like a five by seven or five by nine. And it's got like a ton of stuff in here. This happens to be like just stuff that I would write down. And again, I wouldn't carry this on my person, but this would definitely be inside my pack. Uh, moleskin right there, if you see that. Um, these are really excellent leather. I think it's leather bound and the back it has like a little folder and they just write really well and I do like the fact that you can use a grid paper. I'm a big fan of the grid paper. I don't know, it just, for whatever reason, I like the grid paper and I've been rocking it for a while and as you can see, it's a little chipped up or ripped up, but I mean, can't go wrong with that. And then I don't have any specialty pens, I apologize, but again, like I said, we're going back 2018. All right guys, so for a folding knife, I was rocking the Resilience, I believe this is. Yeah, Spyderco Resilience 420. Uh, it's four. It's a 4.2 stainless steel blade. It is uh, 8CR MOV. This is not one of the 
high priced Spydecos. Uh, right now you can pick this up for about $66 on Amazon. I'll drop the link down below. What I liked about this is it was a very, very good option for what it does. It's a very large blade or long blade, uh, really well made. It, ha it is a liner lock. It does have G10 scales for position clip. So tip up, tip down, right or left carry. It does have jimping. What I really liked about Spydeco's is the fact that how thin they are. They sit inside the pocket very well, very nicely done. And again, this was not one of the top models, but um, as far as it goes, as far as the quality goes, I don't even think I sharpened this but once and that was about it. And again, this is like my EDC knife for just everyday tasks. All right, guys, as far as multi-tool goes, this is my Swiss Army knife, Hercules. Um, I like this one. I also have the Swiss Camp and a whole bunch of other ones. But what I liked about this is it actually has a locking blade. So you can see right there, it locks into place. And obviously, I have used this quite a bit. This little lanyard, I kind of did myself um, just to have some extra paracord and to identify it was mine. It also has pliers in there. I mean, they're small, but they are efficient. It also has in here a saw. All right, and I have used that saw. You can see that right there. Uh, this is a Phillips head screwdriver. Let's see what this one is. Oh, this one is a very, very sharp scissor. So you have to be careful with that one. Um, let's see, flathead screwdriver also with the bottle opener or church key, if you will. And these are all fingernail opens. So, and then here's another one. That's the can opener and that's it. Oh wait, I have another long skinny, long skinny one right there. So that's, uh, that's quite a bit. And there's some on the bottom. This one also comes with the corkscrew and I believe this is the all if I can get it out. I don't think my fingernails are long enough. So, oh man, that thing is in there. <laughs> okay. So I'm not going to break a fingernail getting it out. Uh, and it also comes with, you know, the ubiquitous, um, tweezers on one side. And I think this still has it. Yep. It still has the toothpick that's still in there. All right. So all in all, this is about $115. Um, I like to switch up now and then. It doesn't always have to be a Leatherman, although I do like my Leathermans. I'm a big fan of Leatherman. Um, sometimes I like to switch things up and I would always just throw this either in a coat pocket or in my regular pocket. And they also have a belt carry for this. This one has, I believe, 18 different functions and it's a 3.6 locking blade. So it's a, it's a pretty stout blade. I'm a big fan of it. And for a pocket knife, you really can't go wrong. All right, guys, for a fixed blade, um, this is what I was carrying. This is my Topps Cockpit Commander. If I can get it out, there you go. So that's one of the problems and we'll get into that in a second. Topps Cockpit Commander, say that three times real quick, give you an idea of what that looks like. So this is actually really nice. Um, once you get your finger inside the hole, hey, um, it's not coming out. All right. So I like this as a Marshall blade. I usually try to carry one type of fixed blade for either a Marshall blade or to take the place of one of these others. And it has to be small and very convenient. Obviously this has the metal spring clip, which is okay. The Kydex sheath on here is horrendous because you really can't get a purchase on it. That's the problem is that it usually locks onto the handle, but because you can't get it, you have to use like a two finger method and then try to grab onto it. But this has a, I think two and a half inch blade jimping on the top. It does have a nice finger hole so you can get your hand in there and I have extra large hands and it works really, really well. I would not mind having this for a self-defense option. Uh, I think this is uh, about 3 16th inch thick or yeah, it's about 3 16th inch thick. Um, Sharp blade, it does have a top swedge, which is not sharp, but it, sh it, it does, you know, it has an edge on there. So if you wanted to, you just need to touch it up and you can definitely put an edge on there. All right, but I guess, you know, for most states, uh, 
double-sided knives in some states are no-go so that's why they don't do that but the cockpit commander by tops definitely a really good edc option for self-defense i would just recommend getting a better sheath so for my flashlight i was rocking the uh surefire this is the surefire e2d defender okay this was like all the rage back in the day as you can see it definitely has a lot of wear on it um there's not a lot that you can do they're less configurable than they are nowadays it does have the strike bezel ring in the front as you can see there and it does have a protected rear cap i don't like the protected rear cap um personally uh, but that I guess for accidental discharge it won't discharge. There's two modes on this. One is the 1000 mode, uh, 1000 lumen mode and then if you take your finger off and hit it again it is a 5 lumen mode. So there's only two modes that you can get on this flashlight. I'm a big fan of just having one mode, highest lumens that I need and then that's it. Uh, however, you know, this was the technology back in the day and you cannot remove this clip So the flashlight has to sit up in this configuration if you want to use that clip But really thin um, Really nice if you had to actually use it to uh, make strikes you could it only uses uh, the CR123 battery So this is before we had all our nice rechargeable batteries and again, this is an outstanding flashlight. And as you can see, it still stands the test of time. 1000 lumens and then five lumens. All right, so really cool. They are not cheap. This is about a $200 flashlight or 189 as we speak. So it's not cheap, but I'll put the links down below if you're still interested in that guys. And uh, take a look at that. All right, next we're gonna talk about my gas cans. I have two sets of gas cans. This is my iPro and i don't know if it's written on here but these should be ANSI rated or at least um they are eye protection so what i like to do i don't get the i just get regular dark i don't get polarized i don't get any of that stuff um i spend a lot of time on the range and i want to make sure that my eyes are protected and i don't have to change my eye pro so i just wind up getting the gas cans with the eye protection already in it and they are ANSI rated um comes with a little cloth to clean it nice nice old glory right there and i usually keep two sets i have one in my bag and one in my person at all times all right let's talk a little bit about the pistol again this pistol is clear and safe there is nothing inside there and there's nothing inside here so this was the gun that I was rocking back in uh, 2018. Um, I like it. It's an XD9. Uh, XD9 is made in Croatia and then Springfield took it over. It does have the really annoying um, backstrap safety. I don't like that, but if you don't press it fully, it will not fire. Um, this just has standard sights on it. Easy to break down. It does have the dual magazine release. So if you're right-handed, left-handed, it works. Um, it is kind of weighty for what it is. There's a lot of metal in here. The only polymer is actually the underside. So it is a striker fired gun and it has a pretty decent, but like kind of, this is the heavy trigger version. So there's two versions. There's a regular trigger and the heavy trigger. This happens to be the heavy trigger version. And you're looking at about at least 10 pounds. So again, I didn't really, wasn't really happy with the 10 pound trigger. So I kind of opted to change it, but this is a really nice gun and easy to carry. I like the looks, I like the feel. I just hate this piece right here. Um, ideally it would come with the flush mount seven round capacity magazine and then you can get the eight round magazine capacity the magazines are made very very well i do like that they are slick um, they're not coated with anything so the once you put them inside the gun you can see that little piece actually you can wrap your fingers around it like i said i have extra large hands so that works for me very very well and the ejection it just shoots out i mean when you hit that mag release it just so it's just right across the table so i never really had to worry about it 
Here's a picture of it with the regular flush mount. And again, this is sort of how I would carry it. I can get almost two and a half fingers around it. And then if I wanted to switch out to a little bit more firepower, you know, the, the big old plus one. Again, nowadays it's not a problem anymore because we have uh, double stacks, single stacks, stacks and a half, that kind of thing. But back then this was the bomb, all right? so. This is the XDX9 in 3.3. They also made a four inch uh, for this gun and I thought it was a pretty decent gun. So I went ahead and started rocking it for 2018. Uh, a couple extra mags here. Oh, I didn't, I don't have any ammunition in there, but I usually rock the uh, spear gold dots, nine millimeter uh, plus P 124s or 147s if I can get them. So, <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit about mag pouches. This is the Winthrop mag pouch in leather. So at the time I wasn't making a lot of Kydex products and Kydex is, you know, it's been around for a while, but um, I like this one because it was a double mag pouch and it seems to fit. Also, I think the, this was made more for uh, uh, 1911 magazines. So it kind of fits and it was only like the 1.5 slot and that actually worked out anyway. So it was actually okay with that. So as you can see right there. So a couple different holsters for the Springfield. This is Blade Tech's um, hard Kydex holster. They don't make this anymore. And unfortunately they don't make this pistol anymore either. I think the Mod 2 or whatever, Springfield's up to the Hellcat by now. But what I liked about this is it, it did stick out. This is more of a competition holster and it would just fit inside there like that. Uh, pretty decent, but uh, if you needed a fast draw, you could just get a really nice fast draw out of it. Again, really nice and, and if you need a holster, you can go to Three River Kydex, I'll make you one. I have inside the waistband and outside the waistband holsters. But again, this is a pretty decent design for Blade Tech. Also, Galco made, uh, these are called the Stow and Go, not the Tuck and Go. Um, and they're just really a very nice soft piece of leather with um, some wire in here. And what that allows you to do, there's no friction or anything like that, but it makes a very nice, comfortable piece to put inside the waistband. And this is pretty stout. It does have a decent clip on it. And again, it's just a inside the waistband holster. Again, if you really need a holster for um, a XDS Springfield, you just go to Three River Kydex and I'll make you one out of Kydex. All right, guys, if you like these videos, please like, subscribe, share, add some comments down below. Like I said, uh, I'm just gonna finish up with the EDC videos. I have a lot more stuff, a lot more stuff that I pulled over from the uh, Three River Blades. Go to Three River Blades, check out all the things I have on YouTube. Go to the website, go to Three River Kydex. That's where I make all the holsters and the pouches that I wasn't using in 2018. And uh, guys, thank you very much. Also check out all the links down below because I'm gonna have all this stuff on Amazon links and any little bit that you purchase kind of helps out the channel. So thank you for that. You could also become a Patreon member if you like. And if you like discounts on knives or holsters, go to threeriverblades.com. Scroll all the way down to the bottom first name, last name, and your email address. Thanks very much, guys. And as always, stay safe.